Hi everyone. So in this video, I am continuing the def uh, derivation of wave imprints for TE wave. So in the previous video, I have started the wave imprints definition, which is defined as the ratio of uh, the electric field to the magnetic field in two different directions. So one is if you have taken one x, in another one should be y. So that is z, z is equal to e x by e y or you can write z z is equal to h x by e y. So for T e wave, you have to consider what is e x and e y later uh, from the definition of T e wave e z is equal to 0. So finally we have got z e is equal to j omega mu by gamma j omega mu by gamma. <coughs> so after that, again attenuation constant, phase constant, we have assumed the attenuation constant as 0 and we, that means we are assuming that the wave works well and there is no attenuation throughout the wave get. So alpha is equal to 0. That becomes a, gamma is equal to j beta. Okay. And uh, we know that at cutoff frequency, uh, let us uh, recall the mathematical equations. At cutoff frequency, f is equal to fc. We can write lambda is equal to lambda c, or we can write omega equal to omega c. Gamma is equal to zero. Gamma is equal to 0 and we know already gamma is nothing but what is gamma gamma is nothing but it's h square is equal to gamma square plus omega c we know this uh, c i will write here see all these are interrelated every time uh, i discussing these topics is difficult you just remember the previous uh, topics what i have explained the gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon and we already know h square is equal to a square plus b square that is also equal to n pi by b whole square plus m pi by a whole square okay so this is h square if you again substitute this in the first equation then it becomes uh, uh, finally gamma square is equal to m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square minus omega square mu epsilon okay this is all secondary part <coughs> okay now at this point gamma is equal to 0 at this cutoff frequency if you substitute this in this equation then m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square minus omega becomes now omega c square mu epsilon okay that means we can write omega c square mu epsilon is equal to m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square okay now again substitute this m omega square omega c square mu epsilon as with this term in the same equation here so then gamma square is equal to omega c square mu epsilon minus omega square mu epsilon because this first term this first term first two terms is equal to omega c square mu epsilon okay now what is gamma gamma is equal to j beta already we assumed gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta and assumed that alpha is equal to zero so that's why all gamma is equal to j beta j beta whole square that is equal to omega c square mu epsilon minus omega square mu epsilon omega j beta whole square j square minus 1 so minus beta square is equal to omega c square minus omega square if you take mu epsilon common so beta is equal to root over mu epsilon omega square minus omega c square under root and again you can write it as omega if you take common square root of mu epsilon 
and here it becomes 1 minus omega c by omega whole square okay so that is equal to omega root mu epsilon root over 1 minus see omega c by omega omega c is nothing but 2 pi f c omega is nothing but f so it becomes f c by f whole square okay this is beta equal to now what is where we need to substitute this we need to substitute it in the t equation where is t e c this is t e take this as equation number any equation numbers are there in the previous no so take this as equation number one so substitute this beta substitute beta in equation number one what is equation one z t e is equal to omega mu by beta so that is equal to omega mu by what is beta omega mu square root of mu epsilon omega root mu epsilon and the square root of 1 minus fc is it fc fc by f whole square see omega omega gets cancelled then mu by just to separate these two you will better understand if you separate these two mu epsilon and the square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square see now in the numerator it is having mu and in the denominator it is having root mu okay so root mu cancels in this mu for root mu times so root mu by root epsilon into 1 minus fc by f whole square under root it is zte again you just substitute uh, add these two that means bring those two in one square root of mu by epsilon see just i have taken this epsilon into the denominator numerator divided by 1 minus fc by f now f whole square under root okay and one more thing we know fc is equal to lambda by sorry c by lambda c and f is equal to c by lambda naught just if you substitute this in this z t e then simply z t e can be written in terms of lambdas as a root over mu by epsilon divided by 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c whole square under root as it is in denominator so c's will be cancelled and it becomes lambda naught by lambda c whole square okay now take this numerator square root of mu epsilon where mu epsilon is equal to mu is nothing but it is having free space permeability and as well as relative permittivity and and permeability and again epsilon is also having those two factors free space permittivity and relative permittivity so you can write it as mu naught into mu r divided by epsilon naught into epsilon r under root already we know the standard notations for this uh, mu naught and epsilon naught of course relative permittivity and relative permeability is r1 then it becomes 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 divided by 8.25 into 10 power minus 12 from the standard notations of standard values 
of this uh, permeability free space permeability and uh, free space permittivity so if you simplify this equation 4 pi by this value it is equal to approximately 120 times pi that is equal to 377 approximated value is actually it is 376.5 uh, uh, around so it is 377 and it is measured in terms of impedance ohms so this is known as free space impedance the term here we are introducing that is free space impedance that is eta is equal to you can write it as 120 times pi or 377 ohms free space impedance so that means it is simply replaced with mu epsilon root over mu by epsilon so z te can be written as eta by 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c whole square under root okay this is the value of this is the formula for z t e wave impedance for t e wave wave impedance for t e wave z t e okay for lambda naught which is less than less than lambda c numerator value is very less compared to denominator that means this factor is very high and you can simply neglect this one minus value you can neglect this then z t e is greater than eta z t e is greater than eta okay just it is an assumption based on the three assumptions uh, like lambda naught is equal to lambda c what happens it is infinity and lambda naught is greater than greater than lambda c lambda naught is greater than greater than lambda c what happens it becomes imaginary that is not existed i already told you lambda naught is less than less than lambda c means the first value one minus second value is very less so of course it may be somewhat higher than eta nothing but free space impedance okay because it is in division okay so this is the wave impedance for the te wave thank you